Gardeners often search for magic formulas, special fertilizers, miracle amendments or expensive boosters to bring their soil to life. Yet the real transformation of soil does not come from a store-bought bottle. It comes from the unseen, tireless work of microscopic organisms. Among the most powerful of these are actinomycetes, often overlooked but vital builders that give soil its structure, fertility, and even its unmistakable earthy smell after rain. What's more, there is a common garden scrap that summons them better than anything else. Most gardeners unknowingly throw it away but when used correctly it can turn tired dirt into a thriving living ecosystem. Actinomycetes are filamentous bacteria that behave like fungi. Unlike fast-feeding microbes that consume simple sugars and vanish, actinomycetes specialize in breaking down the toughest organic compounds in soil, such as cellulose, lignin, and chitin. These materials resist easy decay but actinomycetes thrive on them, weaving their microscopic filaments through scraps and slowly transforming them into rich humus. This slow, steady work is why they are often called the architects of soil life. Their presence builds long-lasting fertility and stable soil structure, improving aeration, water retention, and nutrient cycling. At the same time, they produce natural antibiotic compounds that help suppress harmful fungi and soil-borne pathogens. Their role is dual. They construct healthy soil while also defending it. The key to drawing actinomy seeds into your compost or soil is simple woody fibrous garden waste. Materials like corn stalks, sunflower stems, dried bean stalks, and papery peanut or bean shells are often discarded because they take longer to decompose. Many gardeners burn them, pile them up to rot, or haul them away. Yet these are the very scraps that actinomycetes crave. Their fibrous texture provides a steady supply of cellulose and lignin, which serve as food, while their porous structure creates an ideal habitat for filament growth. When buried or layered, these stalks act like scaffolding, giving the microbes surfaces to spread across. Within weeks, gardeners often see powdery, cobweb-like growth on these scraps, commonly mistaken for fungi, but in truth it is the actinomycetes at work. Actinomycetes thrive when fibrous scraps are introduced into compost. The secret lies in creating a balance between slow-decaying carbon-rich material and quick-decomposing nitrogen sources. For every one bucket of chopped woody stems or husks, layer three buckets of green matter such as grass clippings or vegetable scraps. This one-to-three ratio ensures that the pile remains active without becoming stagnant. Moisture balance is crucial. The pile should be as damp as a wrung-out sponge. If too dry, actinomy seeds go dormant. If too wet, anaerobic bacteria take over and create foul-smelling slime. To keep conditions steady, cover the pile with a tarp or a thick mulch layer. Turning the compost is not required as frequently as with fast composting but every few weeks a gentle flip will reveal white thread-like mats across the tougher stems. That sight, and the earthy fragrance that follows, is proof of healthy microbial activity. For gardeners who don't maintain a compost pile, woody scraps can still be used effectively by burying them straight into beds. One of the simplest approaches is trench layering. Basically, a shallow trench about 6 inches deep is dug, filled with chopped stalks and stems, then covered with soil and watered lightly. A mulch layer on top, you know, helps preserve moisture. Within 4 to 6 weeks, actinomycetes begin colonizing the buried material. By the next planting season, the trench becomes a pocket of humus, ready to feed crops and improve soil structure. In clay soils, this method loosens compaction and improves aeration. In sandy soils, it creates humus-rich zones that retain both water and nutrients, transforming otherwise poor ground into productive growing space. When using this method, the balance of materials is important. So, mix two parts chopped woody scraps with one part fresh green material before layering into the trench. This ratio ensures microbial activity is steady without locking up nitrogen from the surrounding soil. Some gardeners may wonder why fibrous stalks and husks outperform traditional wood chips. The answer lies in their density and carbon-to-nitrogen ratio. Corn stalks, for instance, sit at about 60 to 1, which is tough enough to challenge microbes but not so dense as to resist decay entirely. Hardwood chips, on the other hand, hover around 300 to 1, making them extremely slow to break down and likely to tie up nitrogen during the process. Stalks strike the perfect balance. They decompose at a pace that matches the needs of actinomycetes, 
offering both a steady food supply and a porous structure for colonization. They essentially serve as a bridge between fast-rotting greens and indestructible hardwoods. Recognizing when actinomy seedies are thriving is straightforward. Their colonies appear as white, gray, or faintly pinkish threads spreading across fibrous scraps. Unlike slimy molds, these growths are dry and powdery, almost like flower dust. Even stronger confirmation comes from smell. That earthy, sweet aroma, the true scent of living soil, rises directly from their activity. When a compost pile or bed gives off this fragrance, it signals that the microbial architects are at work beneath the surface. To sustain actinomy seedies over the long term, gardeners must pay attention to three essentials, pH, moisture, and continuous food supply. These microbes thrive in soils that are slightly neutral to alkaline, ideally between pH 6.5 and 8. In acidic conditions, their growth slows. To prevent this, scraps can be lightly dusted with wood ash or crushed eggshells before burying, providing both alkalinity and trace minerals. Moisture is equally important. During hot dry months, a 2-inch mulch of straw or shredded leaves helps conserve soil moisture and creates a stable environment for the microbes. Finally, consistency is key. Each season adding new layers of fibrous stalks ensures that colonies remain active, creating ongoing construction projects that continually enhance the soil's structure and fertility. Gardeners who consistently return fibrous stalks to the soil notice profound changes over time. Once compacted or lifeless ground becomes loose, friable, and dark. Roots push deeper, crops resist disease more effectively, and yields improve without dependence on synthetic boosters. The soil begins to smell alive, reflecting the hidden workforce that is building it from within. The benefits compound season after season because actinomycetes do not work quickly and vanish. They work slowly, steadily, and persistently, laying down the foundation of resilient soil. This is not instant gardening, it is lasting gardening, a partnership with microbes that continues to pay dividends year after year. What many gardeners see as trash, corn stalks, sunflower stems, bean husks, is actually one of the most powerful soil amendments available. These scraps summon actinomycetes, the microbes that no chemical fertilizer can replicate. Instead of discarding them, chop them, bury them, and let them transform your soil into a living system. This approach costs nothing, yet it creates soil that resists drought, suppresses disease, and sustains crops naturally. It is a practice that turns forgotten scraps into the foundation of abundance. The true secret to fertile gardens is not found in a bottle but in the partnership between gardeners and microbes. By feeding actinomycetes with the scraps already in your garden, you can unlock the hidden architecture of soil itself. Every stalk, every husk, every fibrous stem you return to the earth strengthens the underground workforce that keeps your soil alive. If you found this guide valuable, remember to subscribe to Soil and Crop Central for more timeless insights into soil health and natural growing methods. Share this knowledge with fellow gardeners so they too can turn waste into abundance and cultivate soil that thrives for generations.